And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries Second Chances here at Lift FM. This is Greg Hennis, and this is our weekly program where we are blessed and thrilled and privileged to bring on many people from many walks of life. Some are authors, some are pastors, some are just ordinary people, but all of them have one thing in common, and that is their desire to do work for the kingdom of God. And we have such a person with us today. His name is Jim Daltrey. And D- uh, Jim Daltrey is the author of the book, actually the Bible study guide, entitled When I Became a Man. And Jim, thank you so much for joining us here on Second Chances. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having me on the program. It's a real honor. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on the program, Jim. Um, let's start off by getting a little bit of background on who you are and where you're from and, and how you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Sure. I was born in Chicago and raised in a religious home. My father was an engineer for the Santa Fe Railroad, and my mother stayed home and raised me and my two sisters. We attended church every Sunday, but it wasn't until my senior year of high school that I began to read the Bible. I was working part-time at a department store collecting shopping carts, and a co-worker began to talk to me about the Bible. He said that the only way a person could get to heaven was by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Well, I didn't agree with him, and I said that you need to have faith in Jesus, but you also need to live a good life and do good deeds. He said that good deeds were important, but good deeds wouldn't get you to heaven. He said only by faith alone in Jesus Christ can we be forgiven of our sins and go to heaven. Well, actually, the reason I began reading the Bible was I wanted to prove them wrong. However, as I read the Bible, I started to understand that I was a sinner and deserved to go to hell. But Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross for my sins. I always knew that Jesus was the Savior of the world, But I never realized that even if I were the only person in the world, Jesus would have died just for my sins. The co-worker invited me to a a Bible study, and the leader uh, talked about heaven and hell. At the end of the study, he said if anyone would like to accept Jesus as their Savior, they could pray silently along with him as he prayed. I prayed and asked Jesus to be my Savior, and he heard my prayer, and from that moment on began to change my life. Now I know that Jesus has forgiven my sins, and one day I'll be in heaven with him, not because of any good deeds that I've done, but because of what Jesus has done for me. Some of the changes, uh, Jim, that took place in your life uh, after you made that conscious decision to Uh, say that prayer and ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. What were some of the changes that uh, you immediately saw? Well, one thing was I had a real desire to read the Bible. Before I was reading the Bible, but I don't know if I was really sincere, I was reading it more to argue with my co-worker. But now I wanted to to learn about God and learn about His Word, and I I started reading the Bible, and the Holy Spirit just opened my eyes up and I could understand what I was reading much better. Before I understood a little bit, but but now I was able to understand better. And I started talking to some of my friends about the Bible, but they really didn't want to hear about it. They kind of thought I was becoming uh, a religious fanatic. And uh, that was hard because I knew these guys for a long time. We played football together, but eventually we had to Uh, go our separate ways, and for the next few years after high school, um, I really didn't have a lot of friends. I spent a lot of time reading the Bible. I I worked uh, several years after high school, and then God put a burden on my heart for foreign missions, and I decided to quit my job and attend Bible college. Now, when you quit your job and started to attend Bible college, 
Um, what kind of doors opened up uh, during that process in your life? Well, I was able to, to go to Bible college and finish Bible college. I studied uh, to be a missionary, and I, after graduation, went to Mexico as a missionary. I uh, completed my first term there, but I returned home because uh, there were family members and relatives that were going through some difficult times. Uh, when I got back to the United States, the Lord uh, opened a unique job opportunity as an international sales representative, and I traveled extensively throughout Latin America for a number of years. And during my travels, God provided uh, many uh, unique opportunities to share the, the gospel message. Uh, later, uh, I, I quit my job and returned to Mexico again as a missionary, but this time I entered the country on a student visa. And my focus was evangelism on the campus of the university that I was attending. Uh, while I was there, my father passed away, and I returned home uh, to the United States. Um, throughout your life, has writing always been a passion, Jim? Well, actually, I haven't done that much writing. Uh, I had one other publication, which was my first book. It was actually my master's thesis when I was in Mexico. I actually, uh, at the university, finished a, a master's in business administration. But uh, When I Became a Man is, is really my first book, and... I wrote it because I saw a real need for a, a men's Bible study guide that was practical and talked about some of uh, the foundational uh, ideas and principles that God in, has in his word for men. We're visiting with Jim Daltrey, the author of When I Became a Man. Of course, the uh, book When I Became a Man is a Bible study, and... Jim, as we, we kind of jump into that, um, tell us how the concept of the Bible study guide that uh, ultimately became When I Became a Man came to be. Well, I, as a young man, uh, started attending a new church, and, and there were some other young guys there that invited me out to a men's Bible study. And uh, I enjoyed that Bible study. But it broke up, and I was looking for more material to continue to study, uh, study the Bible on the role of a man, but there wasn't really much material out there. So I just continued on my own, uh, studying the Bible. I had a notepad, and as I read through the Bible, I would uh, write down verses that I thought were important on the role of a man, I read through the Bible many times and just noted down key themes and, and passages. I started uh, grouping them together and putting together Bible studies and uh, teaching uh, men's Bible studies. And over the years, I, I refined the Bible studies. And uh, a few years ago, my book, When I Became a Man, was published. What, um, what led to the title? How did you come up with the title of when I Became a Man uh, with the Bible Study. How did that come to be? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. In that chapter, uh, it seems like one of the things that Paul is talking about is, is maturity. And in this verse, he talks about, uh, when I became a man, um, I put away childish things. And as a, a child, as a boy, uh, becomes, uh, enters uh, into adulthood, he needs to start taking up the responsibilities of a man and begin to fulfill the role of a man. So actually, actually the title comes from that verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Mm. Jim, if we were to take a, a, a survey and go out and talk to people and we question them and say, well, gee, where do most men learn to be men, what would the answer probably be? 
Well, Greg, it's, it's sad because in our society, most men that I've spoken to have said they really have not had a, a mentor in their life. Some of them uh, said that their father maybe uh, taught them a little bit about what it means to be a man. Some men, their father wasn't around. They didn't have a father. So actually, most men uh, learn what it is to be a man through what society is saying. Uh, other men learn what it is to be a man from uh, what they hear on the street. Uh, a lot of men uh, just try to figure it out on their own. Uh, they try to find their own way. Uh, a lot of men like myself thought that you learn to be a man uh, by trial and error. But God gives us his word, and his word is like a road map, and it shows us what God intended for man. And we can study through God's word and see principles and role models that help us to understand what God intended for men. We're visiting with Jim Daltrey, the author of the Bible study guide entitled When I Became a Man. And uh, Jim, we're going to continue with this interview here in, in just a moment. But if someone's been listening to us for a few minutes and they would like to learn more about the Bible study guide of When I Became a Man, um, where could they learn more, pick up a copy, things of that nature? Sure. It's available on Amazon and other online bookstores, as well as some brick-and-mortar bookstores. But there's actually a special offer from the publisher for your listeners, and that would be abaddonbooks.com slash secondchances. So they could go to that link, and there's a, a special discount offer for your listeners. Okay. When does a man really become a man? If I threw that question to you, what would you tell me? Well, you know, there's a lot of different opinions on that. Uh, often we hear that uh, a man is a man when he, he turns a certain age. Uh, when he's 18, now he's a man. When he's 21, now he's a man. Other people think that if uh, a man graduates college, well, now he's a man. Or if he gets married, now he's a man, or if he serves in the military, that makes him a man. Well, serving in the military is great, but that doesn't necessarily make you a man. Getting married is, is, is fine, but you can be married and not be fulfilling the role of a man. Uh, often people have in their mind that you have to accomplish something or go through some rite of passage, and, and then you're a man. But as we study the Word of God, what we see is as a man starts to take up the responsibilities that God has given him, as he begins to fulfill his role as a man and become what God intended him to be as a man, that's when he becomes a man. The Bible study guide is entitled, When I Became a Man and Jim. The range, age range, if you will, uh, of the, the Bible study guide, When I Became a Man. What ages would you say that this be book is, uh, Bible study guide is best for? Well, I really think it's for a wide range of ages, for high schoolers, for college age. Often at that age, they are, uh, have questions about what it means to be a man. They're actually searching. So it's a great uh, a study for them. I also think, though, for for older men, often older men have a lot of knowledge about what it means to be a man. God has taught them over the years uh, principles and, and what it is to fulfill the role of a man. But a lot of older men don't know how to begin talking about that subject. And what I've seen is that in a Bible study with a group of uh, older men and younger men, often the older men are very excited to start speaking up and sharing what they've learned over the years and what God has taught them. So I really think that the uh, when I became a man is, is for a very wide age range. Any stories you could share of maybe uh, perhaps a, 
uh, men uh, that have been impacted by the Bible study guide of When I Became a Man. Any stories you could share? Yes, uh, one man comes to mind. Uh, I was teaching a men's Bible study, and the first few studies, uh, he was very quiet. He's uh, a man from a small town, and he would uh, give very short answers in his book, and he, when he would speak, he'd give very short answers. But as time went on and we went through uh, more studies week after week, uh, he gained more confidence. It seemed like he wanted to kind of step outside his comfort zone a little bit and really become the man that God wanted him to be. Uh, there's a 10 chapters in the book, and by the time we were at the end of the book, he was uh, really uh, giving very good answers to the questions, uh, speaking out, writing very good answers down, and it was amazing to see the change in his life. Another example is uh, the Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago. Some of your listeners might be familiar with uh, Unshackled, uh, the radio program. They take in thousands of men throughout the year and uh, clothe them, feed them, and they have a Bible program, and they started using when I became a man, and at the end of the program, they asked the men, they said, do you think we should keep using this material when I became a man? And the men said, yes, definitely. This really helped us understand what God intended for men for, to, to fulfill the role of a man. And uh, that's just another example of, of how God is used when I became a man. When I Became a Man, a Bible Study Guide, and uh, Jim, you mentioned that um, the Bible Study Guide is broken up into ten chapters. Um, talk to us a little bit about some of the chapters and, and what they might deal with, if you could, for the next few minutes. Uh, give us a little overview of the chapters. Sure. Why don't I just start with the, a few? I'm not sure how much time we have, but like... We have a few minutes, so you can you know take a minute or two. It would be fine. Sure. The, the first chapter is... Uh, entitled God and Man, and this chapter considers God's creation of man in the book of Genesis. Uh, in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, we read that God created man in his own image and likeness. Uh, man is unique by this fact. None of the animals were made in the image and likeness of God. Neither was anything else in creation. Uh, in addition, God gave man dominion and authority over his creation. So we can see in the first chapter of, of Genesis that God has uh, placed a high degree of responsibility on man, but also given him uh, the ability to fulfill that responsibility. Uh, the second chapter is the perfect man, and this chapter examines the life of Jesus Christ and how he lived as a man. Jesus is vividly portrayed in the Bible for us, so that we can be like him, and we need to study him and the intricacies of how he behaved as a man. Jesus is the image that we should have in our mind when we think of what it is to be a real man. Uh, as I mentioned, there's ten chapters, and uh, I don't know how much time we have to go through them or if there's more questions. Well, you're, you're welcome to uh, kind of give us an overview of the chapters just so we can kind of give you the opportunity to kind of touch on those. And then, of course, um, we can just do more general conversation for the next couple of minutes. But um, any, any of the chapters that uh, you feel stand out, perhaps? Well, one chapter that is often a favorite of many men, there's a chapter entitled Man and Wisdom. And as you... Uh, look through the Bible, a key theme in the Bible is that a man needs to be wise. So many men have come to ruin because of, of unwise decisions. And uh, from the book of Genesis through all the way through Proverbs and into the New Testament, uh, you can see that a, a man really needs to make wise decisions. Now, when you're dealing with the... Um Bible study guide. Would you say, Jim, that it's more for uh, group study, personal devotions, or does it work in either application? Well, it definitely could be used for uh, personal devotions. Each chapter has uh, a page or two. It's, it's 
very concise. I know a lot of men don't like to read. And then after that, there are a number of verses that the men need to look up and study, think about, and then answer questions. So it definitely could be used for a, a personal devotional. I always encourage men, though, if they're going to do that, that maybe they could get another man that would be like their prayer partner and they, they could go through it alone on their, with, the, with their devotions, but then maybe later talk about the chapter. But uh, if they could actually go through it with a group of men, uh, just hearing from different men and their insights, I think that would give a much uh, fuller understanding of, of the material and what God intended for men. Would um, would you happen to be able to, because uh, I think it would be beneficial to the listeners to uh, actually hear the, the, all the chapter titles, could you just briefly mention each chapter title for us? Just give us a little sure. perspective of some of the other chapters that we could maybe specifically sure. speak uh, about. Sure. Chapter 3, uh, the title is Man and Himself, and uh, it, it talks about some of the good and bad characteristics of men and helps men evaluate their strengths and weaknesses. Chapter 5 is, is Man and Men, and it talks about a man's relationship to older men and younger men. Chapter 5 is uh, Man and Women, and that chapter, again, looks at the, the proper relationship between uh, older women and younger women. Chapter 6 is Man and Work, which is a, a key theme in the Bible on the role of a man. Uh, I mentioned before chapter 7, Man and Wisdom. Man and Muscles is an interesting chapter. That's chapter 8. It talks about uh, our body and uh, that God created our bodies and, and some of our responsibilities and how our bodies, the way we view our bodies and others view us has an impact on, on ourselves and our self-esteem. Uh, chapter 9, Man and Marriage. And chapter ten, man and spirituality. Mm. Any possibility, uh, Jim, here in our uh, last few minutes remaining, that you could perhaps share some principles from the Bible study guide of when I became a man? Yes, uh, one principle that that we touched on briefly is is man and work. If we look in the beginning uh, of the Bible in Genesis. God created uh, Adam, and he put Adam in the garden to work. Now, this was before uh, Adam and Eve had sinned. So uh, work is not a curse. Work is a blessing. Work is a good thing. After Adam sinned, then God had cursed the ground, and, and, and now our work is much more difficult. But throughout the Bible, we could see that uh, men are fulfilling their responsibility to work through a, a number of different occupations. So work is a key theme throughout the Bible. I also mentioned wisdom is a key theme throughout the Bible. Uh, another important one is, is our relationship with older and younger men. The Bible really has an emphasis of older men teaching younger men. And so we need to be in that position where we're receiving uh, wisdom and counsel from older men. We also need to have men that are in our age group, our peers, that uh, are going to encourage us on the right path. Now, obviously, Jim, there's many uh, choices out there for men and, and books of education for men, but what would you say that is the biggest difference between this Bible uh, study guide of When I Became a Man and others that are out there? Well, one thing, there's not a lot of uh, Bible study guides on the market. Um, there's a lot of books out there for, for men, and there's a lot of good material where authors share their experiences and principles. There's a lot of uh, multimedia material. But I like to say that uh, when I became a man, puts the Bible back into the men's Bible study. A lot of churches have a men's Bible study, but Rarely do they study the Bible. A lot of times they're watching a, a DVD or going through a, a book written by an author and not actually opening the Bible. Now, I believe that material has a place, but what I would like to see is for men to get back studying the Bible and letting God speak 
to them directly through his word. Uh, another difference with some of the, the, the other books that are out there is a lot of them are very specialized. Some of the men's books, for example, are on the subject of marriage and the family, being a better husband, being a better father. Now, those are important topics, but if you ask a lot of men in the church, have you ever gone through a Bible study, just an overview on the role of a man? Most of them would probably say no. So sometimes we get into some more advanced topics without really providing men with the foundation. Sometimes I say that we often want men to run before they even learn to walk. Hmm. What kind of reviews have you received uh, uh, as far as positive feedbacks of the uh, Bible study guide? Well, Greg, I, I, the book has received great reviews, and I'm really honored. There's uh, presidents of seminaries, uh, deans of seminaries, uh, a chairman of the theological department of a seminary, pastors that have said this is a great men's Bible study. And I'm really honored. I studied to be a missionary, uh, and I studied more about evangelism and sharing the gospel cross-culturally. Uh, these men have doctorates in theology. So for them to say that this is a great men's Bible study, I'm really honored, and I just give all the praise and glory to God. Well, Jim, I think uh, one of the first things we were talking about in the interview today is how you were given the opportunity years ago to uh, basically say the prayer, and uh, once you said that prayer because of your willingness to allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life, that all these changes that we spoke about and consequently the Bible study guide all came to be because of that decision you made so many years ago. And I know that the Lord has other people that just need that opportunity, like you were given years ago, to invite him into their life, ask him to forgive them of their sins, and be Lord of their life. And they just need someone to lead them in prayer. And Jim, would you be willing to do that? Yes. Let's pray. God, I confess that I'm a sinner and deserve to go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ suffered and died for my sins and took my punishment. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I give you my life to use for your glory. Amen. And once you say that prayer, you can expect there to be a lot of great changes in your life. Jim, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, any plans on putting out any other material uh, down the road? Well, we actually are hoping to have When I Became a Man published in Spanish next year. So that's the immediate project we have. I actually work full-time, and in my spare time I'm involved with men's ministry and Hispanic ministries. So if I can have some time uh, to work on another Bible study guide, uh, I, I'd love to, and I'd, I hope to be able to have something maybe down the road. Jim Daltrey, the guest, the Bible study guide, When I Became a Man. And uh, one more time, Jim, best places to uh, obtain a copy or the special offer that you mentioned? Yes, uh, the book's available on Amazon and other online bookstores, also some brick-and-mortar bookstores. And also, as I mentioned, if they go to abaddonbooks.com slash secondchances, there is a special discount offer for your listeners. And uh, real quick, uh, why don't you spell that out for us, uh, the name of the publishing company, so we make sure we get it right. Sure, it's A-B-I-D-A-N-B-O-O-K-S dot com slash second chances. Wonderful. Jim, we want to thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me on the program. It's been an honor, and once again, the Bible Study Guide, When I Became a Man, Jim Daltrey, the author. And we invite you to tune in next week for more Second Chances right here from Advantage Radio Ministries on Lift FM.